Welcome to this tutorial where we will be talking about Niagara scratch pads and a little bit about modules as well. So let's jump into it. So here we are inside of Unreal Engine 5 Early Access. This will work just as fine in Unreal Engine 4. As long as you're using the later versions when Niagara is available, it will probably be looking just the same as it is in this video. So. What is a scratch pad? Well, before we start answering that question, let's create a system first. So we go to FX and we create the Niagara system and we can choose new system from template and choose the direction of burst one. We can choose to name it NS directional burst. Like so. And then we can open it up. So the first thing we want to do is for clarity's sake, uh, go into the system node over here and we change the looping behavior from once to infinite. Then we go to the directional burst node, the emitter, and we change its lifecycle mode from self to system. So it's actually using the system. So it's uh, going to be infinite like we defined. In addition to that, we can also go to the ribbon emitter over here and we can change the color from being white to being something uh, light green. So it's a little bit easier to see over here. We can compile and save. And now we can bring this out into the world. And I can just quickly show you that this particular system has some artifacting going on. You can see that there are some lines being drawn here and there when it tends to end um, near its end of the particle lifetime. Uh, so that's something that's part of this system. Uh, just so you know, it's not something we're going to be fixing, but it will still be a problem even after the changes, changes that we play around with. So going back to our system then, um, what is a scratch pad? Well, uh, you can see over here in the top, we can go into scratch pad. And a scratch pad is essentially the same thing as a Niagara module. Uh, the only difference is that a scratch pad is something that you use for prototyping most likely, uh, and it only lives within the system that you're uh, scratch padding in. So if we, for example, uh, make a module here and we type in the name uh, Gravity Denial. Now we have created a scratch pad and it exists within this Niagara system. So if we go back to the Niagara system over here now, we can click on particle update and we can type in gravity denial. You can see that it appears over here. So it's available inside of this system. If we were to create a different system now, and we can use the exact same template, we can use the directional burst and we'll just keep the default name for that and save and open that one up. If we go to particle update here and type in gravity, we only get gravity force. We don't have it available here. And also we can see it in the scratch pad. So let's uh, remove that one and remove that uh, Niagara system. Let's go back into the one that we have. Um, so yeah, so a scratch pad is essentially the same as a Niagara module. It has the same functionality, which is, um, if you look here, we have an input and we have an output. And in between here, we can have some blueprint like code or logic to do the changes that we want to do. And there's a lot of things you can do here. It's something in akin to something between the material editor and uh, normal visual scripting blueprints um, with a little bit of differences. But this is essentially where we can map uh, whatever inputs we're going to be having inside of this uh, module. And here we can map whatever outputs that we're going to be getting out of this. Um, yeah, so that's essentially what Scratchpad is. So let's play around with it and do something very simple. Now I've called this gravity denial and the reason for that is we want to play around a little bit with gravity force. So we have gravity force here normally which is a downward force of 980. So we want to change this up a little bit and make it a bit more interesting. So we'll go to the scratch pad and what we'll do is we want to define an output variable that we're going to be getting and we're going to have it in the particle attributes namespace and the reason for that is gravity force exists inside of this particle update which is the gravity namespace. So we'll add a particle attribute and we will make it of the type vector 
we'll call this current gravity. And the reason I made a vector is if we go back to the gravity force, you can see that it is a vector of three floats over here. So this is what we're going to be replacing later on. So this is what we want as an output. So we'll drag it to our map set over here. And now we have it as an output. We will be wanting to populate this at some point. So what we will do first, it will drag out here and we'll type in make and we'll choose make vector here. Now we have make vector and this allows us to populate the values for this vector and send it out. So how do we want to make use of this? Well, one of the things we can do is you can see on the particle system over here that it's falling down as the time goes on because of the downward force of gravity that it has. Let's do it so that as the particle ages, the gravity will be decreased. So we can go to particle attributes again here and we can type in age and we can get something called normalized age. We add this over here and we can drag it to our map get here. Now that means that we're going to be using that as one of our inputs. Now this is us, uh, an attribute that exists on the particle itself. So it's not something we have to assign or something like that. It will be red because it is a, a particle namespace variable that already exists. So the value from this is something we're going to be using in our calculations. So what we want to do? Well, we want to make a subtraction. So we type in subtract, put that here, and then we'll drag this to the B instead and disconnect the A. And the reason for this is I want to have something uh, like this. Normalized age represents the, the, the lifespan of a particle. So when it's born, its normalized age will be zero. When it's about to die, it will be normalized age of one. So by right clicking on, on the A on the subtract node, we can change it to a float and then we can put in one there. This means that when the particle is just spawned, we'll get one minus zero, which is one. And then we can use that value to multiply and we'll convert this to a float as well. And we'll use the normal gravity here, which is minus 980. So that means that at the spawning point time, we will have the normal gravity. At the point when we are at normalized age one, we will have one minus one time, which is zero, times minus 980, which is zero. And then that means we will not be adding any further downwards force. So we can just hook this up to our Z now and we can click on apply. And you can now see that we have applied that logic on uh, in our scratch pad. We haven't applied it on the actual particle system yet. We have applied it in the scratch pad. So how can we make use of this in our uh, particle system now? Well, let's go back to our particle system. Let's add our new module or scratch pad, uh, gravity denial. So we'll add that. It will end up in the bottom here of the particle update. We know that we have now created a new namespace variable, which is called current gravity. And we can see that if we expand the particle attributes over here, we can see current gravity over there. So this is the, the value we want to make use of. And we want to replace gravity force with this value. So we could just drag and drop this on the gravity. And that means that it will now be using this value for its gravity force. But immediately you might be noticing that we got this little triangle of an error over here. And we got this little log message here saying that we have a problem. It's saying that current gravity was read before being set. And that's just really true. Because how this works is a grouping goes through its modules in order, meaning from top to bottom. So it will go through particle state, gravity force. And this is where we will try to read the current gravity. However, we're not setting it until we're getting here to the bottom where the gravity denial is. So to fix this, we'll just drag and drop this module above gravity force and everything will sort itself out. So now what is happening is we are setting the current gravity here. We're using the current gravity here and this is being applied over here now. But you might notice that the particles are still going down. Did this not work? Well, yes. How this works is at the start location or the start time, we will have the full gravitational force on our particles. As the particle continues to live, we will be subtracting the amount of force we will be applying on that particle, but it still has a velocity downwards from earlier forces being applied to it. 
So what we want to do is we want to change this up a little bit. We'll change it from subtracting one from the lifetime to be 0 0.5. This means in the beginning we will be have a slightly having a slightly lesser force. Uh, but the most important part is that when we're getting to the end of the lifetime, we will have 0 0.5 minus 1, which is a negative 0 0.5, which will be multiplied by the force, which means it will actually have an upwards force. So if we click apply now, you can see that the particles are starting to sort of sway upwards later on in their lifetime. Since the particles have different lifetimes individually, this means that the particles will be starting to sway upwards uh, sooner or later, depending on that particular uh, particle. But that's all perfectly fine for us. Um, so this is how easy it is to just make some changes with a scratch pad. And this is the purpose of scratch pads, to prototype something within a system and see is this something that works or not. And then you can just like get rid of it if you don't like it or something like that. Now, you might actually get to a point when you think, huh, this, this scratch pad that I made is actually pretty nice. I want to make use of it in different systems, which you can obviously not do because a scratch pad lives within one specific system. So what you do then is you right click on your scratch pad and you click create assets. And then you get prompted to name this new Niagara module since it's a Niagara module, we'll use nm underscore, and we can use gravity denial as the name. And now it has created a Niagara module for us. So uh, now it is readily available to be used in other systems if we wanted to. We can first uh, go and change the category to something like user created, and click enter, and then click apply, compile, save. And then we can close this one down. And now that we are inside our Niagara system again, we can go to our particle update. We can go to the grouping that says user created. And you can see that we see our uh, Niagara module here now. And if we were to go to a different system, it would be available there as well. So if we wanted to get rid of our scratch pad now, we can just uh, get rid of gravity denial. Uh, we can remove it from here and the gravity force here is still using the current gravity over here but we'll just add our uh, nm underscore okay it doesn't find it so let's get it user created like so put that over the gravity so the order is correct and now you can see we have the functionality available here so we have now created a Niagara module from a scratch pad and that is essentially how uh, they're intended to be used, I believe. Um, I hope that all this made sense and that you got a little bit more insight into how to create modules um, and get the whole idea of what you can do. This is sort of like normal blueprints uh, in the way that um, it's difficult in the beginning to know what you can do because as you keep on working with blueprints, you, you learn about new and more nodes, uh, which grows your toolbox. And the same thing is, of course, available here as well, that the more nodes you run into, the, the more things you can do. But you always have this context dropdown, which allows you to at least give get some kind of a sense of what is available by checking, okay, I can, do parameters or whatever uh, and then you can play around and, and see what they actually do uh, so yeah trial and error is is a bit um, of a key element and experimenting around and seeing what works and what does not of course uh, i hope that made sense hopefully you found this video helpful if you liked the video leave a like if you did not like it leave a dislike leave any suggestions or comments you have down below Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.